गुड मॉर्निंग टूडेज क्लास इज ऑन नॉन स्टेरॉयडल एंटी इंफ्लेमेटरी ड्रग्स दीज आर कॉल्ड नॉन स्टेरॉयडल एंटी इंफ्लेमेटरी ड्रग्स और शॉर्ट फॉर्म एन एस ए आई डीज बिकॉज केमिकली दे आर नॉट कॉटिकोस्टेरॉयड्स एंड दे हैव एंटी इंफ्लेमेटरी एक्शन नाउ कमिंग टू द बेसिक मैकेनिज्म ऑफ एक्शन विच कैन बी एक्सप्लेन बाय what the nsaids do as you have read in physiology prostaglandins are substances which sensitize pain receptors to pain producing substances that is nociceptors are sensitized to nociceptive substances by prostaglandins how are prostaglandins synthesized or produced they are products of the enzyme cyclooxygenase also called prostaglandin synthase what does this enzyme do prostaglandin synthase or cyclooxygenase produces prostaglandins now this enzyme cyclooxygenase there are two isozymes of which exist cyclooxygenase 1 or cox1 is called the constitutive form meaning the enzyme is present at all times and is active at all times in certain locations like the stomach where it stimulates the production of mucus to protect the gastric mucosa and in the kidney where it maintains the blood vessels of the kidneys in a dilated state this is the function of cyclooxygenase 1 which is the constitutive form the second isozyme is called cyclooxygenase 2 which is an inducible enzyme meaning most of the time it is in the inactive form when there is tissue injury it gets activated to produce prostaglandins <coughs> the mechanism of action of most of the non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs is they act by inhibiting cyclooxygenase 1 and or cyclooxygenase 2 this is the mechanism for most of the nsaids some of the nsaids are said to be selective cox2 inhibitors or preferential cox2 inhibitors the classification of nsaids the chemical classification is quite laborious but since it is a frequently asked 10 mark question we will go through it we have almost 13 groups the first one being salicylates under which we have aspirin and diflunisal aspirin is the prototype nsaid then we have indoles under which we have indomethacin and celindac propionic acid derivatives very widely used ibuprofen and ketoprofen then we have again another very widely used and quite a safe nsaid paracetamol which comes under the para amino phenols ketorolac and etodolac are pyrrole derivatives oxifenbutazone and phenylbutazone are pyrazolone derivatives then we have the quite recently introduced oxycams namely pyroxicam penoxicam and meloxicam etoricoxib selicoxib and paricoxib are few and known chemically we have one drug under the phenamate group namely mefenamic acid nimesulide is a sulfoanilide diclofenac and asclofenac are acetic acid derivatives nabumetone is an alkanone and finally we have a benzoxazosine derivative which is nephopan as you can see the chemical classification is quite big when a question is asked on classify nsaids if the basis for classification is not specified we can do the next method of classification this is based on whether they are selective cox2 inhibitors non selective cox2 inhibitors and whether they have anti inflammatory or no anti inflammatory under the non selective cox2 inhibitors we have the salicylates example aspirin propionic acid derivatives phenamates oxycams acetic acid derivatives pyrazolones 
Okay, so these are non-selective COX-2 inhibitors, meaning they inhibit both cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2. Then the second major group here is those drugs which have analgesic and antipyretic activity with poor anti-inflammatory action. Example, paracetamol and nefopan. And the third group, we have preferential COX-2 inhibitors. What we mean by preferential is, they do inhibit COX-1 and COX-2, but have a preference for cyclooxygenase 2. Examples include diclofenac, asclofenac, meloxicam and nimesulide. Then finally, we have selective cyclooxygenase 2 inhibitors, namely celecoxib, paracoxib and itoricoxib. Selective cyclooxygenase 2 inhibitors are, a, is, a, this is a frequently appearing 5 mark question in your exams. Like we said earlier, aspirin is the prototype non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. So we go in detail about aspirin. Chemically, aspirin is acetyl salicylic acid, short form ASA. The mechanism of action, like we mentioned earlier, aspirin inhibits cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2 irreversibly. It also inhibits thromboxane synthase which is present in the platelets. Now this irreversible inhibition of both cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2 is also termed as suicide inhibition, meaning once the enzyme is inhibited, it cannot be reactivated. The same thing holds good for inhibition of thromboxane synthase in the platelets. Now, because of this irreversible inhibition of COX-1, COX-2 and thromboxane synthase, the synthesis of prostaglandins and thromboxane is inhibited, because of which Also, there is inhibition of prostaglandin synthesis in the spinal, dorsal, horn neurons and the brain. So, like we said, prostaglandins sensitize nociceptors to nociceptive substances at the site of inflammation. In addition, prostaglandin, prostaglandins also amplify pain in the dorsal neurons and the brain. So, aspirin by inhibiting cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2 also decreases pain amplification which has been mediated by prostaglandins. The pharmacokinetics of aspirin on oral administration almost all the, absor all the administered aspirin is well absorbed. More than 80% is plasma protein bound, excreted as a salicylate or glucuronide conjugate in urine. <coughs> At the usual therapeutic doses, aspirin follows first order kinetics with a plasma half life of 3 to 5 hours. In case of overdose, from first order kinetics, the elimination kinetics becomes zero order, meaning only a constant amount of drug is excreted over a unit period of time. So the mechanism of action of aspirin is it inhibits cyclooxygenase 1, cyclooxygenase 2. Therefore, prostaglandin synthesis is inhibited. Aspirin inhibits thromboxane synthase in platelets. Therefore, platelet aggregation is inhibited. Now, due to this mechanism of action, what are the effects? Aspirin has analgesic effect, meaning it relieves pain. And the Analgesic dose of aspirin is 350 to 650 milligrams per oral given four times a day. Aspirin has anti-inflammatory action, but the dose of aspirin for anti-inflammatory effect is high dose aspirin. That is up to four grams in divided doses. One gram four times a day per oral. The antipyretic dose of aspirin is similar to the analgesic dose, that is 350 to 650 milligrams per oral four times a day. And the antiplatelet effect, how does aspirin have antiplatelet action? By inhibiting thromboxane synthase of the platelets. 
Now this is irreversible. The antiplatelet dose of aspirin is low dose, 75 to 125 milligrams once daily. So the mechanism of action is different from the effects. Now coming to the uses of aspirin as an analgesic at 350 to 650 milligrams four times a day per oral. Aspirin is used to relieve headache, toothache, joint pain, muscle pain, etc. Aspirin is also used to lower the increased body temperature. Now how does aspirin decrease an increased body temperature? In the thermal regulatory center of the hypothalamus, whatever be the cause of the increased body temperature, it could be an infection or infestation or a cancer, prostaglandins reset the thermal regulatory center to a higher level. By decreasing prostaglandin synthesis in the hypothalamus, aspirin lowers the set point, therefore decreasing an increase in body temperature. This is the first mechanism. The second mechanism by which aspirin decreases increased body temperature is by causing peripheral vasodilatation, which causes sweating and therefore a decrease in body temperature. The anti-inflammatory dose of aspirin is high dose aspirin that is one gram four times a day per oral. Aspirin is used as an anti-inflammatory agent in very specific conditions namely in rheumatic and rheumatoid arthritis. The antiplatelet effect of aspirin like we mentioned earlier is due to the inhibition of thromboxane synthesis. Thus bleeding time is prolonged. This is low dose aspirin, 75 to 125 milligrams once daily. Now, when is this antiplatelet effect of aspirin useful? It is useful in the primary and secondary prevent prevention or prophylaxis in myocardial infarction and in unstable angina. This is a two or three mark question in your exams. Give reason, aspirin, low dose aspirin is used in secondary prophylaxis of angina pectoris or myocardial infarction. The answer should mention the antiplatelet effect of aspirin due to thromboxane synthesis of platelets. Low dose aspirin is also used in pregnancy induced hypertension. A word of caution here, at least two weeks before the expected date of delivery, aspirin should be stopped because the antiplatelet effect can interfere with clotting. Topically as an ointment, acetyl salicylic acid has keratolytic that is skin breaking action and is used to remove corns and warts. Methyl salicylate is an ingredient of most of the over the counter counter irritant ointments or pastes. For example, Iodex, Amrutanjan, all of these contain methyl salicylate which is a counter irritant. The adverse effects of aspirin in most of these situations is an extension of its pharmacological action. Now we will go system wise. On the gastrointestinal tract, we said earlier cyclooxygenase 1 the constitutive form in the stomach is continuously stimulating prostaglandin synthesis which stimulates mucus production. Aspirin by inhibiting prostaglandin synthesis inhibits the mucus production in the stomach therefore causing epigastric distress, gastritis and with long term use it can result in peptic ulcer. This can be reduced by administering aspirin after food or along with prostaglandin analogs like isoprostol, rioprostol and enoprostol. The other adverse effect on the gastrointestinal tract is nausea, vomiting and diarrhea. 
Now, in aspirin overdose, it causes respiratory depression, which leads to respiratory acidosis. In addition, there is also metabolic acidosis. Remember, respiratory acidosis, metabolic acidosis, all these are seen only in aspirin overdose or aspirin poisoning. Because of vasomotor depression, renal perfusion is reduced, resulting in the accumulation of metabolic acids, that is metabolic acidosis. So in acute aspirin poisoning, there is going to be respiratory acidosis and metabolic acidosis. In children, especially with viral fever, aspirin can cause a very severe hepatorenal shutdown referred to as Reyes syndrome, R-E-Y-E apostrophe S, Reyes syndrome. Therefore, aspirin is contraindicated in children. This is a two or a three mark question in your exams. Give reason, aspirin should not be used in children because aspirin can cause Reyes syndrome. Aspirin can cause allergic skin reactions, nasal polyps and in susceptible individuals, it can precipitate an acute attack of bronchial asthma. Now, why does this happen? By inhibiting cyclooxygenase, the entire pool of arachidonic acid is diverted to the lipooxygenase pathway, products of which are leukotrienes. Leukotrienes are powerful bronchoconstrictors. Chronic aspirin poisoning is called salicylism. The clinical features include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, hyperventilation, fever, tinnitus, hearing loss, blurring of vision and excess thirst. The treatment for salicylism is very simple. Stop aspirin. Treatment of acute Aspirin poisoning or acute overdose of aspirin is quite common and is also an important 5 mark question from your, in your examinations. Forced alkaline diuresis with frusamide intravenous, sodium bicarbonate intravenous. Now why do we need to do this? Along with alcohol sponging and ice pack to reduce the increased body temperature. Vitamin K intravenous to combat the antiplatelet effect and where facilities are available, hemodialysis can be done. <coughs> you remember we said 80% of aspirin is plasma protein bomb. Okay, so important drug interactions with reference to the plasma protein binding. Aspirin can displace warfarin from its plasma bromines, plasma protein bound sites. Aspirin can also displace tolbutamide, which is an oral hypoglycemic drug. So in a patient who is taking tolbutamide, if aspirin is administered, aspirin will displace tolbutamide, there is going to be severe hypoglycemia. Now, Coming back to what is this alkalinization of urine in aspirin poisoning going to do? You remember we said there is going to be respiratory acidosis and metabolic acidosis. So at an acidic pH, aspirin is going to be unionized. That is, it is going to be electrically neutral. So whatever aspirin is filtered in the kidneys, is going to get reabsorbed by making the urine alkaline. Aspirin is going to be converted to its ionic form. Therefore, less amount is going to be reabsorbed and by administering flusamide, which is a diuretic, more urine is formed. Therefore, more ionized urine, uh, aspirin can be eliminated. Now, for your homework, I want you to look up and find out what these terms mean. That is compensated respiratory alkalosis, respiratory acidosis, uncompensated metabolic acidosis. What do we mean by ion trapping in aspirin poisoning? 
what is meant by uncoupling of oxidative phosphorylation these this these you need to look up for your homework thank you